So, Salam and greetings, humans. Um, welcome to Black History Highlights, episode 1. Uh, today, just to let you know what Black History Highlights is, I am taking 28 individuals from Black History. Mostly, um, yeah, 20 individuals from, from Black History, and we're just going to talk about them. Each person will get a day. Um, and however long these videos end up being. So, um, I've broken up the month of February into four weeks and a day because we've got leap year this year. So the first week will be about scientists and inventors. The second, uh, revolutionary and social activists. The third, artists and entertainers. And the fourth, educators and politicians. This last 29th day will be about um, just people in general, people in the community, people that I know, um, people who I couldn't find enough information about to make a whole video that I just wanted to highlight. So let's get started. So today is day one of Scientists and Inventors Week, and we are going to focus on Dr. Ernest Everett Jess. So, Dr. Just was born in 1883, and we are birthday twins being born on August 14th. He was born in Charleston, South Carolina, to his mother, Char um, to his mother, Mary Just, and his father, Charles Fraser Just. He had two younger siblings, and his father sadly passed away in 1887. Because his mother was now the head of the household, she needed to do some extra work, and so she moved the family from Charleston to James Island, in, um, to a Gullah community in James Island or around that area that happened to have um, a lot of people of color, okay? So he attended a school there and, um, you know, finished. Um, actually, no, his mother, at 13, his mother sent him to an all-black boarding school in James Island. And upon finishing that, um, he and his mother decided that he could get a better education up north. So she um, she sent him up north, and he attended Kimball Hall Academy in New Hampshire uh, from 1900 to 1903. So basically he finished four years of work in three years. Uh, after finishing at Kimball Hall Academy, he went to Dartmouth. Uh, where he graduated magna cum laude in biology with a minor in history. He was also elected into Phi Beta Kappa and was a Rufus Choate scholar for two years. He was a candidate to give the, um, the commencement speech, but, and I quote from a book, the faculty, not included, the faculty decided it would be a faux pas to allow the only black in the graduating class to address a crowd of parents, alumni, and benefactors. It would have made too glaring the fact that Just had won just about every prize imaginable. He excelled in all of his studies, to put it lightly. Um, upon graduating, he took a position as an instructor of rhetoric and English at Howard University. And in 1910, he joined the biology department. Um, in 1911, he helped found Omega Psi Phi with three Howard students. And in 1912, he was appointed professor of the um, professor. He was appointed professorship in the biology department. He worked in a marine biology lab in Woodhull, Massachusetts, for many years. But he decided in order to further his scientific career, he would need to get a PhD. So he went to Chicago, to, um, to the University of Chicago specifically, to work on his PhD. Um, he enrolled himself in a self-study program. And I guess that means you just, it's kind of like a self-made PhD. It's not really, as I understand PhDs to work nowadays, but hey, I mean, 1900s, 2016 stuff tends to change. Okay? And so, exactly 100 years ago, 1916, he graduated with a PhD. After graduating, though, this man, Dr. Ernest Everett Just, produced 
who over 50 scientific papers in two very influential books. The first of which is Basic Methods for Experiments on Eggs um, of Marine Mammals that came out in 19, that was published in 1922, and The Biology of the Cell Surface, which was published in 1939. Despite having a PhD, he found it very difficult to find work in the U.S. So he moved to Naples, Italy to pursue his study. In 1930, after spending some time in Naples, he was the first American, not black American, not minority, he was the very first American to conduct research at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. In 1933, there was the Nazi takeover, and he moved to Paris. Okay, In 1940, he was working in Roscoff, France, and there was a threat of German invasion. So the French government tried its best to move all of its, um, all foreigners out of the country. But Dr. just stayed in order to continue his research. So in 1940, Rostov, France, um, the Germans invaded. He just was taken as a prisoner to um, a POW camp. He was rescued by the U.S. State Department, and some people say, um, and some sources say that his wife at the time, a German national, her father helped with the um, with getting just released. So he was released and returned to the U.S. in 1940. But sadly, he had been very ill for months before being taken prisoner. And the time he, during the time he was imprisoned and on his journey back to the U.S. on boat were very, very hard on him. And, um, it wore greatly on his health. Upon arriving back in the U.S. in the fall of 1941, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and he died on the 27th of October, 1941, at the age of 58. So that is just really the quick and dirty on Dr. Ernest Everett, just as a biologist, as a black American, as somebody working in a physiology lab, I have nothing but gratitude and thanks to give to Dr. Just for everything that he did, all of the, um, all of the things that he really worked on, and just to show you, or to tell you some of those things, um, hold on, I meant to write these down, but I didn't, I apologize. Okay, so he, here are the things that he worked on. He pioneered many areas on physiology, including the physiology of, of development, fertilization, um, experimental, excuse me, experimental parthenogenesis, hydration, cell division, dehydration in living cells, and ultraviolet carcinogenic radiation effect on cells. I'm going to take five seconds to get up on that platform and say, UV radiation affects everybody. You don't just have to be fair skinned. People of color, you can also be affected. Okay, so wear sunscreen. Okay, even on cloudy days, um, if you're going to have a lot of exposed skin, um, put on some sunscreen. You can't see the sun. Okay, but if you would like to check out more on Dr. Ernest Everett Just, I will leave for you um, links to all the sources that I use down below, but I also found that there is a, bio a biography on him uh, titled Black Apollo of Science, Black Apollo of Science, The Life of Ernest Everett Just by Kenneth R. Manning. So I will leave um, a link, probably an Amazon link, down there as well, so you can check out that book if you're interested in more on Dr. Just. If you have any suggestions that you want to see in the coming weeks, please leave me a comment, write me a personal message, send me an email, any way that you see fit, get to me. Tell me your person who fits into scientists and inventors, revolutionaries, and social activists, artists and entertainers, 
educators and world changers or just somebody random that you want to see me talk about. So thank you an infinitely large amount for watching this video and I hope you have a wonderful Black History Month and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye guys!